that make it our time? On your favorite Arkansas sports talk station. Streaming live from hitthatline.com. There's a lot of lions, tigers, and bears, but they even one Razorback. Number one. This is the Morning Rush. Borderline erotic. With Ty Richardson. Let's go. That's cool. I can dig it. And Tommy Kraft. Do I look happy? What's wrong? Lloyd! The Morning Rush starts right now. All right, the 1981 Walter Camp Coach of the Year, three times Southwest Conference champion, uh, former coach of Mississippi State Bulldogs and Texas A&M Aggies. Jackie Sherrill now joins us. Coach, good morning. Appreciate your time. When I'm looking at your coaching timeline, you played for Bear Bryant, you coached under Bear Bryant, then you coached under Frank Broyles, and you also coached under Johnny Majors. How instrumental were those three guys to kick off your coaching tenure down the line? Well, all three were different uh, personalities and all three were different in coaching, but, you know, they all were very successful. And having the opportunity to uh, be exposed to all three uh, was very vital. And and you kind of, Picked a little from each one. You know, Coach Bryant was a man's man, and there was no question of his success and how he coached. And then Coach Brawls probably was the, you know, CEO probably is the best way to describe Coach Brawls. Uh, very intelligent, but he approached it you know, differently. Coach Majors probably was the best PR guy and approached things differently than Coach Bryant or Coach Brooks. But they all had uh, the formula for success because they all three were very, very successful. And you think about the legends that those guys were and then follow you. I mean, you think about all you learned how. Like as far as the takeaways you mentioned, kind of each and bearing each out, which would you you played for Bear and you coached under him? Would would you say you probably took away more of what he taught you than the other two? Uh, well, you had more time. When I say time, uh, the time of the exposure, you know, as a player and then certainly as as a coach under him, uh, you got to see things differently. Uh, I probably coach more uh, with the players, more like uh, Coach Bryant than I did uh, like Coach Brawls or Coach Majors. Jackie Sherrill with us here on the Morning Rush. You got to coach against Arkansas in two different conferences, at Texas A&M and the Old Southwest Conference, Mississippi State and the Southeastern Conference. Anything stand out to you about those games, those series? Uh, sure was a lot of fun back in the old SWC days. Yeah. I liked everything but playing in Little Rock. I hated <laughs> to play in Little Rock. What What was it about War Memorial you uh, so despised? You know, for the small stadium, it was the loudest stadium of any place that we played. And it, uh, I it, mean, it was, uh, you know, for the people that never experienced any games in Little Rock, uh, it was – a hard place to play if you were the opponent. I remember some of those those great battles in the late eighties between A and M and Arkansas, and um, you know some some conference uh, titles being on the line, and, and and having to go down and play there in College Station. That that was quite a venue you had uh, had there in your time in, at A and M. Well, you know the big game uh, is when I believe it was eighty five, and. Kenny Hatfield, we were moving. We, you know, we dominated the game, and at the end of the game, they moved the ball, and, I, and they were on the plus, and it was fourth and three. They run the option, and our safety make comes up and makes the play, and that was probably the biggest play in the game, you know, because if we don't stop them there they probably would have won the game 
Coach Jackie Sherrill with us on the morning rush. Coach Tommy referenced the Southwest Conference, the old Southwest Conference case. You think about the talent in the 80s. How difficult was it to navigate that conference as a head coach during that time? Well, I mean, when you go back and look at you had Arkansas, Texas, Texas A&M, and then even when you look at uh, Texas Tech, SMU, uh, you know, there was a period of time that SMU was good as anybody in in the whole U.S. And but the the teams that you played, that it was just it was a conference that each game was a hard, tough game. And you know, the the SEC today is probably as close. But the rivalry in the Southwest Conference, because you know you only had one school out of state, and all the other schools were in the state of Texas. Coach, you mentioned uh, playing in both the SEC, or excuse me, coaching in both the SEC and the Southwest Conference. We've had a lot of former players. We've had a lot of former coaches. We've had Arkansas fans that sometimes wish. They were still in the Southwest Conference. Do you wish that conference had stayed intact? Well, the the economics, uh, as you know, drives college football. It drives everything. Uh, TV at that time uh, was, and it still does, drives college football. The money is it comes from your television package. And, you know, no one really knows today what the SEC ESPN television package is because they don't want to allow the other conferences to know what they're paying the SEC. But when you look at how you judge uh, revenue, it comes back from one thing, fan base. Because that's where they can sell the the advertisers. That's where you know TV makes their money. Mm-hmm. Same thing in the NFL. You know, but te- you look at the you look at the fan base of all the schools in the SEC. Uh, all of them are probably a, a, a at or way over a million each school in fan base. And there's only one other conference that can rival that, and that's the Big Ten. And give you an example, the top five TV fan base in the cities in the country, and you you start off in Birmingham's number one, 85 or 89%, 85%. Then you go to Atlanta, then you go to Tampa, St. Pete, then you go to Houston and Dallas. Those are the top five. Where are they? They're all in the southeast mm-hmm. part of the country. All in that footprint. You, you, you were in, in the league with Texas, and Texas is always credited as being a tough, not just tough on the field back in the Southwest Conference days, but tough to do business with, tough to be a conference member with. And, and credited for a lot of the reason that there was the, uh, the the folding of the Southwest Conference in a lot of ways. Can can you can you share some insight from your perspective as why Texas made it so difficult from a financial or a business reason to to be a conference member with them back when the Southwest Conference was intact? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, the loss got really greedy, and when they go to the conference meeting, he wanted most of the conference TV money because we've stating the loss. We've been on TV more than anybody. We drive the conference TV and that was uh, the start. And Tom Osborne in the meeting said, you know, we've earned the right to share. And if we don't share, we're, we're out. And the next year they didn't share, and, and Coach Osborne called the Big Ten. 
and that started the land side. But before that, what DeLoss wanted to do and tried to do was to take Oklahoma and to take A&M, Texas, uh, and probably Colorado, but he, the Pac-12 back then, or Pac-10, they were going to come and take all the teams to the Mississippi River, the big teams. And on a Sunday, they flew into Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and Texas. Well, A&M said no, but it wasn't a definite no. They flew to Texas, and what killed the, the big deal was, of course, and I have to give Coach Stallings the credit because he and the at that time Coach Stallings was on the on the Board of Regents, and the comment was, you know, we don't ride anybody coat coattail, and he really pushed the Board of Regents to really think hard because a lot of them wanted to go with Texas to the to the Pac-10. That would have been Pac-12, as we know today. But when they go to Texas, they get to Texas, and this was probably after a month in the workings or two months or whatever, <coughs> the presidents in the Pac-12 said that they could come into the conference but they would not be allowed to have their TV package that they just signed with with ESPN for $15 million a year. So what happened in the conference of the Big 12, uh, you know, if they, and I'm not, this is my opinion now, if DeLoss had gone to the conference and said, we will give you uh $3 million for three games per cable. The Big 12 would have jumped on it. Uh, or back then, or said, you know, $6 million. Well, three or $6 million out of 15 still made them a lot of money, and they could have had their, their total package, and all of a sudden that didn't happen. And so the Texas Network as you know, has not worked like they originally planned for it to work because they were going to have, you know, the high school football, high school basketball on their channel playing in their playoff games. So there's, there was a lot of things that were going to happen in the television package or the Longhorn package uh, that never was able to happen. Interesting uh, stuff concerning conferences. Uh, we're speaking with Coach Jackie Cheryl here on the Morning Rush. Coach, before we let you go, uh, 1998 was a big year for you guys at Mississippi State. You guys, you guys go on to the SEC West. Um, Arkansas comes off a decimating loss to Tennessee the week before they play you guys. What do you remember about playing Arkansas in 1998 and everything leading up to that game? Well, both teams are really good. And there wasn't any question there, but you know we we had been building the team for a while, and you know we had some great players. You know Eric Moulds, of uh, one player in the series between Mississippi State and Arkansas. If you could say one player that was the best player, or biggest player in those series was Eric Moulds. And Eric put on a show uh, and, of course, went off and had a great career in pro ball. But, you know, the series between Arkansas was always very, you know, the greatest, one of the best, the hardest games is when I was at Texas A&M and, like, I didn't do my homework and we're playing Arkansas, but we agreed to play Arkansas in the morning 
at 11 o'clock. I really didn't do my homework. <laughs> and normally we send somebody to, uh, you know, visit the place we're going to stay, make sure all the rooms, all the food, all everything is in order, time. Uh, but we didn't do it. And we ended up staying up in, in uh, uh, the resort town, Springs. Uh, and at that time, there wasn't any hotel. You stayed in the different cottages. So the timeline, we were up at 5 o'clock. It was dark. It's cold. In late Arkansas, it's not a, a, a great place to play weather-wise. But it's cold. It's kind of misting. So we get on the bus and we we stop. You eat four hours prior to game time. So at seven o'clock we leave at six. Stop at a, at a, a, a pancake place in between there and in, in, in Fayetteville, and they did not have enough personnel to serve the team. And I think we had some players that didn't even really get to eat much of their food. And in, during the game, we started off and played really well. Arkansas was running the option. And, you know, we quarterback gets out of the game. And then they bring in their backup quarterback, which was a throwing quarterback, and we couldn't stop him. At halftime, that was the first time I could really say I never had anything that I thought I could say to change what was going on. Cold and miserable. <laughs> but that one game uh, really t helped us change because the next week we come home and we beat TCU. TCU wins. They go to the conference, Southwest Conference Championship. And then we go to Texas and we beat Texas 42 to uh, 12 in Austin. And that, that's what turn, uh, changed Texas A&M around But one game. It was, you know, getting our rear ends handed to us. But you don't want to play Arkansas at the end of the year in Fayetteville. <laughs> well, Coach, we, uh, we appreciate you making some time for us. I know you had success turning a couple programs around, and uh, we'll see if Sam Pittman can do the same thing here. Coach Jackie Sherrill, with us here on the Morning Rush, Coach, we really appreciate you carving out some time for us. Well, there's, there's, you know, the Arkansas fans is one of the fan bases that are really true and loyal. And if you're the head coach, you'd want to coach have the fan base at Arkansas every Saturday in the stands. I think, uh, I think yep. you hit, hit the nail on the head, Coach. Exactly right, Coach. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Right. Talk to you guys later. Think about the timeline of playing for Bear Bryant, yep. coaching for Bear Bryant, coaching for Frank Boyles, and then coaching for Johnny Majors. Yeah. I, 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 I'd be hard-pressed to find a better start that you could, as far as the people you could learn under than what Coach Jack Sherrill had with his time at, early on as coaching. Yeah, and uh, we were talking earlier about the passing of Don Shula, another one that played all the way back from Paul Brown. I mean, you just think about these ties to – some of these coaches that we watched and revered, and then you think about where their roots came from, and that I guess that's what ties all this history together. But it was good to hear from Coach Sherrill here uh, on the Morning Rush, a guy that coached against Arkansas at a couple different schools and two different leagues. Uh, so good good to catch up with him this morning. Brought to you by Burton Pools and Spas, their 42nd anniversary sale underway right now. Save up to $10,000 off on endless pool fitness systems. You can save $2,700 right now on Hot Spring Spas and up to $770 off on in-stock Doughboy Above Ground Pools. They're doing curbside pickup right now, so any chemicals, supplies, anything for your big green egg, anything you need to purchase at the store, if you don't want to come in, they'll gladly bring it out curbside to you at Burton Pools and Spas. They're in Springdale and in Fort Smith. Virtual tours, uh, video chats, everything available. Go to BurtonPools.com for the details on that. Burton Pools and Spas.